Okay, good morning. It is uh, New Year's Eve. Here we go, right? I'm working tonight, which is awesome because not a big fan of New Year's Eve. It's just, it, it, I, well, as exemplified by, this is my last, I know, I brought out a prop. This is my last piece of apple pie and it'll be gone. I've already had a piece this morning. It'll be gone by noon. There, I said it. But New Year's Eve to me, it's like, I really don't need more pie. I don't need more booze. I don't need less sleep. I'm like, I'm just over, not over the holidays. I'm not a Scrooge, but <laughs> dude, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. It's just a lot of, a lot of work. Okay, so this is Mount Shasta this morning. Uh, the Mount Shasta, some of the legends up there, look at the colors. Some of the legends up there are interesting. The Klamath people believe that Spirit Chief Skell descended from heaven to the summit of Mount Shasta. And the Klamath Indians consider, as most of us do, consider Mount Shasta sacred ground. And then there's the lost city of Telos, and that's the, uh, the Lemurians living under there. And then there's reptilians, lizard, lizard people. Okay, I know, it is interesting though. Mount Shasta is, if you Google around, man, it's like, it's a thing. There's some energy going on there, and I have to agree. Uh, these little areas, isn't that awesome? Look at the pockets of fog. First thing you'll notice this morning in Mount Shasta is there's, there's not much snow in the trees. Uh, they had some low elevation uh, uh, rain, or high elevation rain, pardon me, and so that cleared it off. You see the rain snow line here, pretty much. But Mount Shasta, on that mountain, they got a few more feet of fresh over the last couple of days. So Mount Shasta, beautiful this morning. Everything's beautiful this morning. You can see the state of California. There's some valley fog down here. Beautiful high cirrus clouds here. Those look like mares tail, like horse mares tail cirrus, which always indicates something happening way up to the north, right? And I often say this is how the old navigators and frontiersmen and women, how they used to manage it, look up and they'd see these clouds high ice crystal clouds, meaning they're, it's frozen up there. They're up above 18, 20,000 feet. And they're running without a lot of uh, interaction with the, 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 the mountain surface, in other words, the topography. So they, they have a clean line, right? Whereas opposed to the lower clouds, like there's certainly fog, but stratus and alto cumulus, cumulus clouds, they start dragging on the terrain. The, even the friction of the ocean slows it down. So these higher clouds move out ahead of the weather system. So when you see those, you go, oh, there's still stuff going on out in the Pacific, right? And that's, that's how you do it. In the mountains, it's plenty of bluebird, a lot of sunshine, snow up and down the crest. We're doing well for snowfall. We can always do better. We, many places in the northern Sierra Nevada, over 100%. Uh, and we're gonna continue getting more snow, especially as we head into your Friday. Friday looks wet. These are some of the overnight, or these are some of the right now temperatures, which is at uh, 10 o'clock this morning. It is 23 degrees in Truckee, 29 degrees at Palisades Tahoe. Sacramento right now is 43 degrees, 44 degrees up around Canocti and Clear Lake, or actually 40 degrees up around Canocti. And then you can see the temperatures around the bay in the upper 40s and low 50s. So it was cold last night. We did have that freeze warning, but you know, freeze warnings to me are they're this time of year, dime a dozen, unless they extend to multiple days. Like we've had a couple of mornings like this, which is fine. It's gonna warm up tomorrow morning, won't be as cold. But when you get day after day after day after day, you start encountering you know big problems with, with the unhoused population, with pets with pipes and so on and so forth. And that's not where we're at with this. This is gonna be warmer tomorrow morning. Won't be a freeze warning. Could be a frost advisory tomorrow. They don't have it up, but you probably will see frost. Mm. This is the uh, GFS. We look at it often, so we know what we're looking at. We're looking at Friday now. No, this isn't Friday, this is now. You're gonna see this system. See how that goes through? That is on Wednesday morning. And some of the models suggest something as far south as Marin County, but you see, you're looking at the same thing I'm looking at, right? So the main impact for that is gonna be warming us up on Wednesday and bringing the clouds in. So more clouds on Wednesday, okay? So, and I know you have this week off, I'm stoked for you. And then you go here, this is the Friday event. Friday looks pretty good in terms of the potential for rainfall, 10th of an inch, half inch for areas south of San Francisco, but then that rain line north, right? 
Marin County, you're going to get an inch, inch and a half of rain, maybe more. So this is that, and then as we push forward further, you see it just stays kind of, we got a kind of a dry run coming. I'll show you this in the long range. So this is, that was rainfall. This is Vorticity. This is off this um, College of DuPay site. This is the GFS. Again, there's other models you could use to represent 500 millibar Vorticity. 500 millibars is essentially, let's just say, let's just use 1,000 millibars. I think it's 1,013 is sea level pressure. Then you go halfway up through the atmosphere and it's 500 millibars. It's less, right? Because the atmosphere waves. And so it's like being at the bottom of a swimming pool. So when you're at the bottom of a swimming pool, you swim all the way down to the, and your ears hurt, that's the pressure from all that water above you. Well, the atmosphere operates the same way. A lot of water in the atmosphere. So the lower down you go, the higher the pressure. The higher up you go, the less the pressure. So meteorologists use 500 millibars. I used to use it. I think they, we still use it that way as halfway up the atmospheric chain. So that's typically where you're finding the, the, the jet stream in this 500 millibar, millibar range. Uh, and, and you know, you're, 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 it, it varies, 500 millibar height moves around, but 500 millibar, halfway up into the atmosphere, so now we know we're dealing with upper level winds, and vorticity is just um, an area of instability. It's just shear, and you can, if you, if you had physics, you kind of know a little bit about vorticity, but it just shows you spin. Positive, clockwise spin of an air parcel, is a stable pattern, or it's sinking, counterclockwise in, in compressing, and counterclockwise flow, which is the reds and purples here, are in unstable, low pressure, counterclockwise. So it's just a, it's an easy way to see, easy way to find instability. That's, and it's just an easy way to look at, I like, I love this map, just because, number one, let's just roll it through real quick. Isn't that awesome? You see the coolness of that? Are you kidding? Oh my gosh. So that's the planet breathing. If I back it up again, let's start where we are now. I got a circle around us. Here comes Friday, right there. See that? So there you go there. Okay, that's verticity. And that trough is deep enough. It's not super deep. Southern California under a slight ridge. So they're not getting much. And now we get out here into like kind of fantasy land, but it's still, you know, these models are, the long wave, long wave patterns are, not easy to predict, but more predictable than the short waves. And these are long waves we're looking at essentially. So there's that ridge pops up. You get an inside slider here. That's on Monday morning, the 6th. That would bring snow to the Tahoe area, but not much of anything else to anybody else except cooler, maybe a frost advisory or freeze warning in the Bay Area. That's Monday, Monday night into Tuesday morning. And then look at that ridge pop up again. And that's semi-permanent. See that big bullseye? Right there, everything going over the top. And then I think this, another inside slider. Then that's not a big rain producer because that's coming from the north. So it's sort of bringing cooler air and it's unstable. There's vorticity. In this case, it looks a little bit negative because we're on the backside of the trough, but you don't bring a lot of moisture in with that. So there's a lot. So what did we just get in? What did we just say? It's gonna rain Friday. You're gonna end up with about, by the time we get to Monday, you're gonna end up with two inches up in Eureka. You're gonna end up with a quarter inch to half inch in Marin County. And you're going to end up with San Francisco, maybe two tenths of an inch, something like that. And light in the Santa Cruz Mountains. And oh yes, the line south of Monterey dry again. And I'll pop on this um, depiction that shows above average percent, how, how much above 100%, how much below 100%. So the greens, the blues, it's Marin County, right? It just it's, it's mimicking the map I just showed you. It's Marin County north, it's unloading. And the upside to that is this winter, Lake Shasta and, and um, Lake Orville to the two largest surface reservoirs in the state where we get uh, most of our water. Well, so LA gets a lot, a lot of it, but that's, those are getting water. They're getting rain. They're well above average rainfall, fortunately, but Southern California, they're, 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 I'm not saying in trouble, but they're definitely uh, thinking about it. Okay, so this is, where are we, right? Oh, this is Marin County, let's pop that in. This is this morning, this is an old favorite, looking south towards Montero Point, or P Pedro Point, pardon me, that's out in the ocean. And then you see the day spreading out in front of you. It is a good one, a few high clouds, winds are slightly offshore, the surf's not bad, we'll look at that coming up here. These live pictures sort of fill in the gaps. Uh, this is, 
oh, uh, Mount Lincoln. I used to love skiing at Sugar Bowl, and this is the top of, of Sugar Bowl. Out here, you see the Valley Fog, out in the Truckee Valley, out towards Donner Lake, out towards Lake Tahoe. That's Sugar Bowl, top of Mount Lincoln. This is the top of Palisades, Siberia Express, which I love that as well. And just a beautiful day, and I'm happy for all you skiers. You, there's snow, it's a little icy, but I have to say that last week, right? I mentioned this last night, ski resorts make not some of their money during this hol holiday two week period. They make almost all of their money. This is the two week period. So that last week was, <clears throat> was so kind of rainy and inclement. It just wasn't fun. And I, I know it, people rent ski, get ski leases and ski houses and condos and you count on that week being money. And it, and it wasn't, it just wasn't great. I mean, I know y'all had fun, but this week, boom, right? And so I'm happy it's working out for everybody. That is uh, Palisades. This is Heavenly Valley. And the thing I, first thing I pick up here is, okay, this is why I love pictures. Well, it's blue sky, but look at lake. See how smooth and glassy it is? And Chris, you know this. But whenever I look at water like that, I go, oh yeah, first thing I look at is the water. And you do too, you go, first of all, you see reflectivity, but you also go, oh yeah, there's no wind. That's awesome. So that also indicates why the fog would be down in the Donner Lake area, right? No wind, nothing to stir it up. Um, and the other thing, the second thing I notice is the snow rain line, right? You can see where the snow is, you can see where the snow is not. So I'm not exactly sure what that elevation is. But then you also see, look how little snow there is. It's dry on the ground. That's from the rain that we got earlier. So that just shows you a lot. And then Ocean Beach, an old standby. The swell is down. It's west at about seven, south, where it's west at about seven feet, nine seconds, 12 seconds. So it's not small. It's a little squirrely right now because the tide's still going high. It's going to start draining out pretty quickly, and that'll calm things down quite a bit. And then Seamer Lane doesn't like a high tide, but you can see some folks going for it. See how hard it was to catch that wave? Because the water's deeper and the, it's not really hitting the bottom. And when it doesn't hit the bottom, it doesn't slow down and you can't catch it. You got to catch it right there. Well, he did catch it. And that's why you use longer boards. So the tide out there, again, Seamer Lane this afternoon is going to be awesomely fun as we get into um, this afternoon, the lower tide. So we're covering a lot of ground. This, I mentioned this yesterday, wind socks. I mean, I wish I knew this as a kid, but so wind socks, you see them at airports. Some of the old timers, you know, in my neighborhood used to have wind socks, right? Just cause you could, yeah, it was kind of like, instead of having automated uh, anemometers, wind gauges, just look out your window before you go feed the cows and there's the wind sock. So I, I don't think people do that anymore, but I'm thinking about getting a wind sock now. But I, I guess what I want you to point, forget the mile per hour, the meters per second. But when you look at a wind sock, let's just do this. Let's go, when you're hanging down, I know it looks kind of weird. It's, yeah, it's kind of got a weird phallic thing going on, but let's just get past that. Um, let's just say when it's halfway hanging down, you're at between three and seven miles an hour. Okay, so you can visually go, oh, three and seven, and they're all calibrated, they're, they're, they're supposed to be all calibrated the same way. Then when you get at 10 miles an hour, it's kind of out with just a little tip hanging down. And then when you get to 17 miles an hour, which I was way off yesterday, but when you're, let's call it 20 miles an hour. When that bad boy is laying like this, it's 20 miles an hour. And when it's half, when it's half down, let's call that 10 miles an hour. Let's just do that. Let's just go half down is 10, straight up is 20. So now when you drive by the airport, you're gonna be money, especially the small ones, you got the kids in the back. You go, ah, you know, hey kids, it looks like the wind's blowing about 10 miles an hour or in this case, um, 20 miles an hour when it's straight out. And remember, the wind blows into the sock. So that's a, when, let's say, um, okay, well, let's just use this. Let's just set this at a compass setting. A west, let's say that west is west on this page. So that's a west wind because it, that's, it's a west wind blowing towards east, but you call that a west wind. You don't call that an east wind. A west wind blowing from left to right. A north wind blowing from, top to bottom. It's blowing from the north. That's the wind direction is northwest. The wind is blowing from the northwest. In this case, we're calling it wind from the west. Half hanging is um, 10 miles per hour and straight out is 20. Money. Okay. Have a great day. Thanks for uh, tuning in. We'll see you back here tomorrow.